Uh, we're very excited about that, but we're also, I'm excited to have Lana back for sure. Um, but we're going to kick off the show with uh, the news of the day. And that is the closing yeah. arguments yeah. were uh, had today at the Trump hush money trial. And, um, I, you know, there was a, a whole bunch of news that came out of it today. There was just some, you know, reports on what the defense said, what the uh, prosecution said. I know Donald Trump was tweeting about the fact, I, I guess he doesn't understand how trials work, but he was complaining on Truth Social that uh, the prosecutors get to go last and that's not fair. Um, I, I, does he truly believe that all the rules have been changed just because it's against him or does he do this because he knows the people who follow and believe that? The latter. Yeah. I mean, he's, been in enough, <laughs> you know, he's been in enough trials to know better. Like, come on. Yeah. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. And, you know, at this point, so we'll talk about this a little bit later, but at this point you're running for the presidency of the United States and you're showing needs in the polls. So maybe he feels comfortable which I don't know why anybody would ever feel comfortable, whether you're leading or you're not leading in the polls right. anymore in this country. But, right. um, you know, you would think that you were going to try to do anything you can to pick up more voters. The people who believe that the judge changed the rules in this trial. So because it's Donald Trump and he wants to screw him are already voting for him. They're, I mean, the other people are like, come on, man. I mean, you know, I'm still might vote for you, which I still don't understand, but don't try to hit me with this bullshit. I mean, right. he's doing nothing. I mean, literally nothing to try to pull up new voters. But again, at the end of the day right now, things don't feel great. I mean, they don't feel great. But again, we've talked about before the polls, we've talked about whether or not to trust them, but at some point you gotta, there are some red flags and there are some right. things you gotta be concerned about for sure. Right. Well, he actually is trying to pull up new voters because he did go to the South Bronx. So he did go to the Libertarian Convention. I mean... <laughs> Neither one worked out, I think, the way he thinks it was going to, although, again, to his supporters and all the sycophants that right. repeat him and do all the dumb shit that he says, I mean, I was going to pull the clip, and this was all last week, and I was just like, you know what, it's so old at this point, you know, so much shit happens that I'm not even going to fuck with it, but since you brought it up, um, there was a news report, because they wanted to make sure that when Donald Trump talks about the crowd, there was a helicopter flying right. over the crowd, right? right? And it showed maybe 1,500 to 2,000 people there right. while he was talking. But of course, and I even know idiots who try to convince me. On the bottom, it was the newscast from the 11 o'clock news. And it said 11.09 on the bottom. It said he didn't go on stage until 6 o'clock. That was at 11.09. I was like, you idiot. That's the live broadcast time of the news network. You, Right. Oh, my God. It, right. Lana. Right. right. I mean, but the park only held but a certain amount of people anyway. Right. So you're not going to have 25,000 people and it only holds 2,500. Like, that's one thing. And 1,000 of those people were from out of town. And by the way, you don't fuck with people from the Bronx. They were interviewing some of the Bronx people and they're like, I saw fucking cars out there. They're like from Pennsylvania. They're from Texas. They're from all over the place. These aren't right. Bronx people. Right. Like, like Bronx people don't know any better. Like, right. It's, it's so, it's so disgusting. <laughs> like it's just how dumb he thinks thinks people are like yeah. he thinks everyone is as dumb as his cult followers Correct. right like he would i mean the nerve of you to put these two rappers on stage like who are being investigated for murder like the nerve of you because you're just like they rappers black oh score like yep. really probably parted uh promised to pardon to it, them that, damn down he did yeah. uh, come on stage and if i become president you get a pardon. the problem is and correct me if i'm wrong lana 
I don't know if anybody knows who the fuck those two were. No. Does no. anybody know them? No. Well, maybe I. You know what? In I the Bronx, I, right? I can't say if they're from the Bronx. Maybe they have underground, and people underground know them. But well, that's the one thing. I, I will say one thing. It doesn't matter your education level. People know their community, period. It doesn't matter. If you're in a community, they know it. So don't fuck with them and don't try to bullshit them because yeah. it, it, they know it. They know what they grew up with. They know how, you know, they know what's going on in their own community that you're not going to fool them. It's New York. We know Central Park Five. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't Yusuf district pretty close? What is his district? Like, I, I wish I looked that up because I thought that he was on the other side of the Bronx. I thought it was Bronx, but I could be wrong. Yusuf, one of the five that is now a congressman. Oh, yeah. I don't that I don't know. Um, but I did see a funny tweet somebody did put out and said that if Donald Trump is convicted in this trial, that the Central Park Five should put a full page ad in the New York Times and ask for his electrocution. It's, no, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> funny. It's, 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 yeah, I agree. But, yeah. you know, because it wasn't a very eventful day at the trial, there were a few things that did happen today. And one thing I did like, and I actually thought about this before, and I saw other people say the same thing, is that when they have these sycophant press conferences out in front of the court every day that are being covered ad nauseum and being covered by the news, no matter what news it is all day long, the right. Biden campaign sent some people out to pay themselves and uh, they were asked why they were there. And a Biden um, uh, representative had an answer for them. And this was a fucking great answer. Biden campaign decided to come here today. Because you all are here. You've been incessantly covering this day in and day out. Yeah. And we want to remind the American people ahead of the next debate, of the first debate on June yeah. 27th, of the unique, persistent, and growing threat that Donald Trump poses to the American people and to our democracy. So since you all are here, we're here communicating that message as we will do day in, day out, until the debate in Atlanta. A plus fucking move right there. Brilliant. Yep. Fucking brilliant, right? Like... If we, if the media is not going to cover what we're doing, we're just going to go to the media. That's exactly <laughs> right. And you know, that is, they should, I, and I hope, and I, I suspect that they plan this accordingly. I, they plan it every day where they are talking and they are bringing up what Joe Biden has accomplished, what a threat Donald Trump is to democracy and to this country. And just the whole list of everything that need to convince anybody that would consider voting for right. Donald Trump or not voting for President Biden. Right. Like Rashida Tlaib is out here talking about. We're going to get to her in a few minutes. Girl. Yeah, we'll we'll get to her. And it's I just by the look on your face, I can tell you have some things to say. But before we do get to her, there was another uh all-time superstar, Robert De Niro. And I don't give a fuck. I see people right now on Twitter and they're like, washed up actor. There is one thing you cannot call Robert De Niro. This is coming, by the way. From the same group of people that have Scott Bayo and uh, Kevin Rosie Sorbo, O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell, or no, Rosie uh, Roseanne Barr. Rosie oh, O'Donnell's sorry. a good one. Yeah, Ro sorry, yeah. Rosie O'Donnell, yes. Roseanne Barr. Sorry, yeah, Roseanne Barr, James Roseanne Barr. Woods, Ricky Schroeder, the guy that was on fucking Silver Spoons. You know, I, these are the washed-up actors. <laughs> that they follow every day on Twitter and get Robert partially De some of their news from. They said Robert De Niro. Stop Robert playing. De Niro <laughs> could, you can make a case. I mean, because everything is subjective and it's all opinionated. But if somebody said to me, Robert De Niro's the greatest actor of all time, I, that's that's a tough one to argue. It, truly. <laughs> yeah. Robert De Niro, like, even if you don't like him, can't diss his movies like are you kidding he me? literally was just nominated for best supporting actor in his last role in that movie uh, killers of the flower moon he was by the way 
this is before this clip. He was amazing in that movie. Amazing. He was. I saw it. Yes. He <laughs> was awesome in that movie. But he was also awesome today. And this is him being uh, having his own press conference. Gets into it a little bit with some Trump supporters. But, you know, it's Bobby D. Country and saying, I'm not leaving. I'm dictator for life. By the way, I love New York City. I think Manhattan is one of the greatest places in the world. Mm -hmm. But I dare anybody to be in Manhattan where there's not at least one horn going off. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. All right. I hope this new ad campaign, campaign reaches outside the bubble to remind supporters of what a danger he is to our lives. This is not a threat. This is a reality. And that's why I've joined the Biden-Harris campaign, because the only way to preserve our freedoms and hold on to our humanity is to vote for Joe Biden for president. Really. To, we don't have a choice. On January 6th, while Republican lawmakers despicably tried to keep the loser Trump, the loser Trump, in the White House, and Trump-inspired insurrectionists stormed the Capitol. Brave men and women from law enforcement put their lives on the line to defend this country. By the way, they're going to get to them real quick, but as you can see, officers Harry Dunn and Michael yeah. Fanon, who were the January 6th officers that day, whose lives were in danger by right. these fucking animals and monsters, um, it, it, it gets real. It gets a little contentious here, which is really irritating. But Robert De Niro is going to handle them. Our democracy. They are the true heroes. These guys are the true heroes. They stood and put their lives on the line for these low lives for Trump. They lied under oath. They lied under oath. Right. Who lied on the road? What are you, what are you telling me? You. Those two traitors lied. Excuse me? Those two traitors lied. They lied on the road? That's right. What are you saying? They're traitors. They're, tra they're traitors. You got to, I don't know, I don't even know how to deal with you, my friend. So, I mean, Robert De Niro is handling it as best as he can because that is fucking irritating. First of all, they lied under oath. There's a video of Michael Fanon getting beaten. There are people saying, uh, shoot him with his own gun. I mean, there are, it, it, it's, and this is coming from the people who keep saying back of the blue and all this right. garbage. Right. And for the record, Michael Fanon, by the way, voted for Donald Trump in yes. 2016. He was yeah. a Trump supporter. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes when something like that happens to you, it's a good way to change your mind. Right. Because you see how crazy they are. He's probably like, why did I ever back this fool? Yep. This yep. Monster. But, you know, at least he had the sense. And, you know, I know I, there's a lot of people out there whenever I see somebody going, well, they used to vote for Donald Trump or they used to support. So we're, we're going to celebrate them now. I will celebrate anybody that was on the wrong side of history and changes their mind and goes, I was wrong. Just right. like when people try to bring up uh, Biden and Obama were against gay marriage. So and but they're like, well, times progressed and they were like, you know what? Maybe we're not. You know, it's just we we understand it more because after some time, everybody, if you allow yourself to get educated properly, right. then you can change your opinion on some things. And by the way, that's kind of what Lana and I want to try to do with people who are watching the show. We want to try to change the opinions of somebody that may think that Donald Trump is better for this country than, um, than Joe Biden. And I know we're never going to get the, the, the hat wearers and the t-shirt wearers and the flag flyers. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, anybody that's on the fence or anybody who used to be like Michael Fanon or anybody, you know, just, and I know I'm not saying we're a small show. We're not like dominating the airway, but just one, two, three people change their minds. It's a big deal. I agree. Cause I, I don't, <laughs> it's like, the guy says that they lied on the oath, and he has no hmm. 
proof. Like he's just saying that in like, did you not watch the video? That that's what I'm saying. Like, you know that there's a video out there. So you're either being, you know, purposely obtuse. Or are you just ignorant as fuck? And how are you that ignorant at this point? Or you just don't want to know, so you don't look. You just turn away. Because I don't understand how you didn't see that video yet. Or are you guys running around talking about it's fake news? Like, it's like that didn't really happen. That didn't happen? Did they not bring a news from Mike Pence too? Like, it's, what? I think that's the most frustrating thing is like you said that he the guy yelling at them saying that they lied under oath with no proof is the fact that there is proof out there that these gentlemen were attacked. These gentlemen were um, were um, um I don't I'm not sure what I'm looking for but th- these are the these guys were were the ones being attacked and there is proof of that. And he, th- these people refuse to acknowledge a lot of the proof that is out there against Donald Trump, against the right. Republican party, against MAGA, against all these people. They just uh, either ignore the truth or like Lana said, they're just ignorant to it. And there's no way I refuse to believe that there are that many people out there that did not see the footage of January 6th. Why? They're just liars. Like, honestly, I am just saying in my head, like, they don't care about the truth because Donald Trump doesn't care about the truth. These people know that he's a fucking fraud. They know that this shit happened. They just don't want to say it because to say it is like you're on the losing side and they're obsessed with the winning side. It's like, it's fucking nonsense at this point. Like you, they saw that, that there's no way you, so everyone that was in the Capitol and who has been convicted and in jail, we're saying that this is Biden control that like that again, it just doesn't make any sense like it's just not logical to think something like that it's stupid yeah none of it's logical and um i, I think that's, admitted it. that and and they pled guilty yeah <laughs> a lot of them it. were in front of the judge saying i regret yeah. my decision to yeah. do this it was not smart it was stupid and you know and at least they're right about that but you know those are those are kind of you know you go into that and you're breaking into the Capitol. Just, I mean, I don't know. You're taught as a child, you know, sort of what's right and what's wrong. And then once you start to develop an adult brain, you definitely know what is right and what is wrong. Even though sometimes you think it's you justified in your mind, there is always something in the back of your head going, I know this is fucked up, but I don't care because the, the momentum of the excitement of you doing what it is you think you're doing is right is taking over that part of your brain. And, you know, unfortunately a lot of people got caught up in it and they regret it. Some people still laugh in the face of it while they sit in jail. I'm sure not having a great time, but, um, and also thinking in the back of their minds that Donald Trump's going to release them in November or January, but uh, let's finish up with Bobby D has to say, I don't even know how to deal with you. Actually, Bobby D could probably go back and read some of the scripts of the movies he's in and figure out how to deal with them. A little good fellas. I just feel bad for Fanon and Dunn back then, right? It's like literally in counseling right now, can't do their jobs anymore, the jobs that they loved. And this motherfucker is here talking about they're liars. Well, I don't know who the gentleman who is talking to them but you could just kind of look at the looks on their faces right now. And my guess is, is that those two, if they really wanted to, could rip the head off of that idiot who is talking shit. Now, of course, they're not going to do that. They've already went through what they went through. And right. But just look at their faces. Like, dude, how fucking dare you? Who the fuck are you? Nobody. You, He's no- absolutely Nobody pretty sure he's not a military man pretty sure he ain't a cop he's probably a fucking coward because they all are yeah 
but he's the he's the patriot and they're the liars. And it is amazing, too, because those were police officers. I mean, those were the police officers. I'm sure the same guy who probably at some point during a Black Lives Matter rally was yelling black back the blue and back the blue, you know, and all this stuff. But see, and this is the thing. It's the dynamic of this whole thing where they change positions. Right. So easily without thinking twice about it and not even caring if they thought about what they're saying. It doesn't right. even matter to them. They're going to pick and choose what they decide is right for them and they're going to move forward with it, even if it's against what they were fucking fighting for the whole right. time. In the, in the beginning. Exactly. God exactly. Damn it. I. <laughs> they stood there. They didn't have to. And there were other ones in there who probably were in with them a little bit too, and they found a way to get around. Not these guys. They stood there and fought for us, for you. For you. Well, they weren't fighting for me. No, they, no, they fought for you, buddy. You're able to stand right here now. Only on they the streets the, of New York City with yeah, the car well, good alarm for Robert in the De Niro for taking care of these two idiots or that guy, and and you know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, like I said, good move by the Biden campaign. And if it is true by, from what the representative did say, if they're going to be out there every single day, um, although I wish I mean, they started we're kind of earlier, days, but that, I know I wish they started this earlier and, yeah. and just to backtrack for a minute, the fucking fool is like, they, they didn't stand up for me. And meanwhile, Republicans are taking his social security. Listen, idiot. I, <laughs> just idiot. It, 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 Lana, <laughs> nothing makes sense anymore. And I'm trying my best to kind of figure out, I mean, because again, I think it is easy for us to call the idiots idiots, you know, and we know who the idiots are. We, When we say idiots, we know exactly who they are. And that's something that I really, it, there's no changing that, you know, it's just, they are who they are. And I, I, we're never going to convince them. It just is. They are who they are. And here's the thing with this, right? So it's not even, you know, we're trying to convince them and you must see it my way. I call them idiots because they don't think out of the box. They call a sheep, but they don't do their own research. Like, just for instance, you know, I have that resistor group, right? Yep. Somebody wrote, I have to go through the tweets and make sure the tweets are okay. That has our tag on it. They wrote, you know, Donald Trump, the drug addict, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, no, he's not. That has not been proven. Right. We can't right. put that out with our hashtag. Yep. Right? That's how we think. I hate him. But I'm not going to call him a drug addict because it hasn't been proven. Yeah. These fools. <laughs> Biden's a pedophile. Why? Where, where are you getting that? You're making this up. You have no proof. You're just saying it because it's a conspiracy theory. On Trump 4chan. Said it. Yeah, on 4chan. Tucker Carlson repeats it yep. or whoever the fuck it is. And that's where you get it from. There's no independent thought ever not you can use you can watch c-span neutral just (laughs) npr neutral and they don't do it they go right to fox so that's why i call them idiots because they don't even it doesn't make sense oh the ballots they were changed how is that possible Mm -hmm. when Trump lost at the top of the ballot, but all the other Republicans on the ballot won. So what are you saying? This ballot's no good. Throw it out. So that means that all the how they got the House of Representatives is not really they they shouldn't be there. That's what you're saying. Yeah, and this is I think part of the problem is that people like us, you know, and maybe people watching, and this isn't just Democrats. I mean, there are plenty of. Republicans out there that do not like this mess. They don't want any part of it. Um, but you know, we're 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 talking to a whole new group of people that never involved themselves in politics before, 
ever. And now they think they're the experts on it because they listen right. to outside sources and people who have nothing to do or had nothing to do with politics for years. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I want to do a deeper dive, I think, on the people don't, a lot of people don't realize, you know, a lot of these podcasts that you hear, these right wing podcasts, they are heavily funded by billionaires. And these billionaires fund these because they know these guys will get a message out that's mm -hmm. eventually going to help them because the only thing they care about is Donald Trump being elected because he is going to be the one that helps their pocket. He, Damn what happens to the rest of the country. They don't give a fuck because they know they will be fine. Right. So, you know, and, and that goes to local news too. A, a lot of these billionaires fund local news. So a lot of a lot of news that's getting out there and a lot of people that are listening to this news are um are easily swayed, uh, let's just just say they're not the highest educated they're not the most informed people and they're easy to manipulate and they do it a lot now with you know even they they do it with these these podcasters and stuff who i, I they're not even you know most of it younger white males get involved but it, it is really a lot of younger males they're going after mm -hmm. which is concerning because um they're playing into some sort of bravado thing with them that makes them think that you're a big pussy, that if you vote for the people who um, are who defend the LBGTQ right. community, stuff like that. Right. So, you know, and they're impressionable early. And maybe a lot of people grow up at some point and realize that that's all bullshit, but they're attacking a lot of that um, – demographic but i think maybe the good news is, is i don't know how many of them are actually going to go out and vote right i think about that too like are these people really going to go out and vote <laughs> like for real they it seems like you're right they have a lot of talk they yeah. want to be on twitter talking shit but they're not going to vote <laughs> yeah i mean i you're arguing with people now because you hear on like a Joe Rogan podcast. Like you're right. talking about Anthony Fauci and they're talking about he's a criminal. And I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? Why am I having a conversation with you about Anthony Fauci, who's been a CDC director for decades, who's right. been in many different presidencies. Right. You're going to tell me that you're Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback right. of the fucking Jets, now has the answer about Anthony. I'm like, God, this is so stupid. <laughs> He's man. got a cure too. 